Good evening, um, Nick and Ruby. Can I just do a quick sound check first uh, to make sure that you can hear me okay? Um, if you could click on the little raised hand icon at the top of the screen there and let me know that you can hear me. There's a little button. It's next to the, uh, it's just to the right hand side of the mic icon. That's great, Nick. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ruby. Excellent. That's fantastic. Well, my name is David Kelly. I'm the prospect manager here at Edinburgh Business School and, and uh, really appreciate you taking the time this evening um, to, to join us to hear some background information about the school and its programs. Um, I'm also joined, uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Malcolm Kins, our regional director uh, for our office there in Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. You can see Malcolm there. Good evening, Malcolm. And I also have uh, Kia as well. Kia is a uh, going to work in the background to answer any questions. Uh, Key is also based at our, our office there uh, in Sydney. Um, I think Malcolm might want to say hello. Yes, <laughs> thanks Dave. I was just going to say good evening and thank you uh, uh, Ruby and Nick for, for joining us this evening. Uh, obviously we've got a, a bit of a small group tonight but um, uh, hopefully that will give a good chance for us to answer any questions and um, um, we may well get some more participants joining us uh, during the evening. So look forward to having a chat um, as we as we get into things. Excellent. So thanks, Malcolm. I will get started then. I'll just start with uh, some some housekeeping and uh, some housekeeping aspects as we run through this session. I think I'll speak for about twenty to twenty five minutes and give some background information about the programs. And then Malcolm will, will speak briefly about uh, some of the activity uh, taking place in. In the Australia, New Zealand, and Pacific Islands, and um, I'm just looking at uh, the list of options that are things that we need to cover here. And I'm just going to mention as well, Nick, that you should use the chat box if you want to ask any questions. Keep on hand there to answer uh, any questions that you have. You can ask them in that chat box, uh, and there you can and you can ask them throughout the session. It is a small group, so so just pop your messages in there. Uh, as we work, as I actually walk through the, the the slides, but you you might find that we cover a lot of the content anyhow. But we will allow Malcolm and myself will allow some time at the end to to answer any questions, and then I'll leave you with a short graduation video, and um, also uh, an area where you can download some of the files, such as the student handbooks, etc. So, without further ado, um, I'm not sure Nick how familiar you are with Edinburgh, where the business school is based. Um, Obviously, we're the, the capital city in the uh, based in the United Kingdom, and it's it's a fantastic uh, city. I'm not sure you may have been here before, but uh, it's actually a major financial and business centre. We look at the big uh, financial institutions and pen institutions like Standard Standard Life and Scottish Widows. They're based here. The Royal Bank of Scotland is also based here in Edinburgh. It's it's not only a great place to to work, in fact, but it's a fantastic place to live. The the uh, International Festival, which I'm sure you're familiar with. I know Malcolm's probably joined uh, or been here and visited the festival many times, but it's, it's a really fantastic time of year. It runs throughout the summer summer months. And also, you can see in that bottom picture, there you also have the Hogmanay Festival, which runs in the new year. That's a fantastic uh, festival. And it's really a, a city rich in history and has beautiful architecture. So it is a fantastic place to, to live and work. Now, hurry to what university? is one of four universities based here in Edinburgh. It's uh, first established as an old technical institution in 1821 and it received its Royal Charter in 1966. Now the Royal Charter gives it the degree awarding powers and that's issued through an act of parliament by the UK government. It's one of four universities in Edinburgh. We also have uh, the University of Edinburgh. We have Queen Margaret here in Edinburgh and also Napier University. So four universities in Edinburgh, it's quite a lot. So it's, it's, uh, that's really, really good. Um, we also uh, specialize at the university in science, engineering, and business. And in fact, Harriet Watt University has a strong reputation for research. Uh, on this campus. And there is some stats as well, Nick and Ruby, if you want to have a look uh, at our rankings, you'll see some ranking stats there in terms of how we rank internationally. Um, and they are on the university website. If you go to the, the, the home page, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see, see some details there on rankings. There's about see, almost 8,000 on-campus students in the UK now. I think on our, our campus in Dubai, we have almost 2,000 students as well. And we opened we moved to the new campus in Pudai, Malaysia uh, in 20, uh, 2014, summer 
14, and we, we're growing the student numbers there also. About 35% of our students are postgraduate students here in uh, Scotland. Now, just to move on to accreditation, this is a, it's a, a we always question on accreditation, are we accredited, is the, is the uh, degree recognized, and it's usually a term that's not fully inter understood internationally. It's a generic term used for the process to certify the academic quality of a program or institution, and it's really important uh, for us to ensure that our prospects and our students have confidence in the integrity of the award they're signing up for, and this is guaranteed uh, by virtue of Harriet Watt University's status as a royal charter institution which I mentioned a moment ago, and that Royal Charter gives it the degree awarding powers to award degrees, diplomas, and certificates. And it's issued by uh, good. It's the highest level of accreditation in the UK. And we, we spend a lot of time at the, at the school ensuring that our degrees are recognized in the various ministries of education around the world. And, always, uh, and this is something we always take very seriously. Um, you can see the point there on the slide that the degrees are accepted in all Commonwealth countries and in the US. Now, just to give you some background um, about the school itself, you can see there in the top uh, right of the slide, that's actually the building I'm sitting in this morning. It's uh, eight minutes past nine o'clock on a, on a Wednesday morning, and uh, um, we're the Graduate School of Business of Harriet Watt University. We're, uh, we're based here on the campus. We offer postgraduate programs. Uh, we don't offer undergraduate degrees. They, they tend to be offered by our sister school, the School of Management and Languages, and that's all based on the um, on the campus here in Edinburgh. We're the largest business school in Europe, and I'll come back to that uh, that uh, point in a few slides. And certainly in terms of course design and course delivery and supporting our students, we have a unique, flexible approach to, to learning. And I'll talk a bit about that uh, in the next few minutes. The gentleman on your right there, that is Professor Keith Lumsden. He's the founding director of Edinburgh Business School. Um, he was a, a business as well as research academic at Stanford University, where he taught at the Graduate School of Business for 15 years. While he was at Stanford, he conducted extensive research into how students learn, how to design courses, and what makes a good course. What makes a, what are the variables of learning which make it stick? And after about five years of ins of research, he concluded that class size didn't matter, contact time didn't matter, that everybody learns in different ways. And, and this is really the underpinning philosophy of the ES approach to its uh, courses and programs. And on the bottom left there, you can see some, uh, some of our happy graduates. That's on graduation day. And actually, there in the sunken garden there, it's a beautiful part of the, the campus here. Students come here year every June and December, uh, November to, to graduate. And it's a fantastic occasion. Really is uh, fantastic. Uh, you can see there it's a, it's a beautiful sunny day, which we always value here in Scotland. Now, the, the Edinburgh Business School approach to its courses is based on that research carried out by Professor Lumsden and his colleagues. They believe that if you, you uh, make the courses flexible, that you could suit the whole, you could suit uh, many learning styles, different learning styles of individuals. So the courses were built from right from the outset. They were built to be to be flexible. Everything we, we, we deliver is applied and practical. So we, we present students through the course material with a concept, and that's always followed by a real world example and then another real world example. So it's really, really applied and practical. So students, what they're learning during the week, they can apply in their jobs. This again, week. So it's really everything you, you learn on the course, you take to your work and apply it there in any industry or economy. The courses also have an international perspective. They've been developed by leading academics in Tulane University in the United States, in London Business School, from INSEAD, and also from Professor Lumsden, obviously, who was at Stanford uh, Graduate School of Business. It's very hard, I would mention here at this point as well, it's very hard to have first three points without having on that slide there, without having that fourth point. Um, really, to ensure Sure, the degrees that we award, uh, that Hurry, what university in fact awards, uh, maintain their credibility and desirability. We have to ensure that we've got rigorous standards. So, no matter how, where, and when you see, we'll always ensure that we assume to rigorous standards. And this is something we believe strongly in. That last point there as well, I would mention that the course is very portable. Certainly, in terms of the 
MBA and the MSc programs in, in, in their nature, you can apply them to any industry and economy, but, but, but in terms of the practical course material, the practical learning uh, side of things, well, you can actually download the course material to an e-reader. You can see a gentleman in that uh, image there at the top. He's got a, a, an iPad or something like that. You can download it to an iPad. So you can travel while you're on the move. I know a lot of our students have to cover um, a lot of miles when they're, they're working. They have to be very mobile. They move a lot. So they need to be able to study while on the go. And uh, you can do that with our with course uh, websites and the, the, the functionality that we provide. Now, just to speak uh, for a bit about the our flagship program, which is the MBA program, and it's really true to the core values of the, to the school. It's one of the world's most successful MBA programs. We almost have 18,000 graduates now on the pro program, which is uh, amazing. And we have about 12,000 active students now. And an active student is somebody that sat in the four most recent uh, exam sessions. Um, we have students in over 160 countries worldwide which is growing all the time and we have 25 approved learning partners as well so the approved learning partners um, just to give you a bit of background on them they're authorized to provide tuition in our courses uh, so some students like to have that face-to-face -face interaction with uh, tutors and peers and they're dotted around the globe you can have a look uh, guys there's a link on our website as well and uh, you know I, I'm aware there's none in in New Zealand and uh, Nick or Ruby in Australia but um, certainly if you if you were moving with your work, you could have a look. And and some students avail of those approved learning partners in Africa and other continents. Certainly, the numbers in numerical terms are not an end in itself, or from a, an academic perspective, but do give an indication of the enduring popularity of the program. So, my, as I mentioned, the MBA program is true to the core values of the school, and it was originally created, uh, and this still holds, uh, created for mature, ambitious professionals. Mature because you have to bring your experience to the program to your studies. It's not a it's not a, a program that we would recommend that undergraduates who've just completed their first degree go on to study right after that because you need to have to under, uh, the experience to underpin uh, your studies when learning new concepts and tools. the average work. Now, Hurry to What University is one of four universities based here in Edinburgh. It's uh, it was first established as an old technical institution in 1821 and it received its Royal Charter in 1966. Now the Royal Charter gives it the degree awarding powers and that's issued through an act of parliament by the UK government. It's one of four universities in Edinburgh. We also have University of Edinburgh. We have Queen Margaret here in Edinburgh and also Naval University. So four universities in Edinburgh, quite a lot. So it's, it's, uh, that's really good. Um, we also uh, specialize at this university in science, engineering and business. And in fact, Harriet Watt University has a strong reputation for research uh, on this campus. And there is some stats as well, Nick and Ruth, if you want to have a look uh, at our rankings, you'll see some ranking stats there in terms of how we rank internationally. Um, and they're on the Harriet Watt University website. If you go to the, the, the home page, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see, see some details there on rankings. There's about see, almost 8,000 campus students in the UK now. I think on our campus in Dubai, we have almost 2,000 students as well. And we opened, we moved a new campus in Puchajaya, Malaysia uh, in 20, uh, 2014, September 2014. And we were growing the student numbers there also. About 30% of our students are postgraduate students here in uh, Scotland. Now, just to move on to accreditation, this is a, it's a, 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 we always get questions on accreditation, are we accredited, is the, is the uh, degree recognized, and it's, it's usually a term that's not fully inter understood internationally. It's a generic term used for the process to certify the academic quality of a program or institution, and uh, for us to ensure that our prospects and our students have confidence in the integrity of the award they're signing up for. And this is guaranteed uh, by virtue of Harriet Watt University's status as a Royal Charter institution, which I mentioned a moment ago. And that Royal Charter gives degree awarding powers to award degrees, diplomas, and certificates. And it's issued by government. It's the highest level of accreditation in the UK. And we, we spend a lot of time at the, at the school ensuring that our degrees are recognized in the various ministries of education around the world. And always, uh, and this is something we always take very seriously. Um, you can see the point there on the slide that the degrees are accepted in all Commonwealth countries and in the US. Now, just to give you some background um, about the school itself, you can see there in the top uh, right slide, that's actually the building I'm sitting in this morning. It's uh, eight minutes past nine o'clock on a 
on a Wednesday morning and um, we're the Graduate School of Business of Harriet Watt University. We're, uh, we're based here on the campus. We offer postgraduate programs. Uh, we don't offer undergraduate degrees. They, they tend to be offered by our sister school, the School of Management of Languages, and that's also based on the, um, on the campus here in Edinburgh. We're the largest business school in Europe, and I'll come back to that, uh, that uh, point in a, in a few slides. And certainly in terms of course design and course delivery and supporting our students, we have a unique, flexible approach to, to learning. And I, I'll talk a bit about that uh, in the next few minutes. The gentleman on your right there, that is Professor Keith Lumsden. He's the founding director of Edinburgh Business School. Um, he was a, a business as well as research academic at Stanford University where he taught at the Graduate School of Business for 15 years. While he was at Stanford, he conducted extensive research into how students learn, how to design courses, and what makes a good course. What, makes a, what are the variables about learning which make it stick? And after about five years of intensive research, he concluded that class size didn't matter, contact time didn't matter, that everybody learns in different ways. And, and this is really the underpinning philosophy of the EBS approach to its uh, courses and programs. And on the bottom left there, you can see some, uh, some of our happy graduates. That's on graduation day. And actually, they're, they're in the sunken garden there. It's a beautiful part of the, the campus here. Students come here every year, every June and December, uh, November to, to graduate. And it's a fantastic occasion. Really is uh, fantastic. Uh, you can see there, it's a, it's a beautiful sunny day, which we always value here in Scotland. Now, the, the Edinburgh Business School approach to its courses is based on that research carried out by Professor Lumsden and his colleagues. They believe that if you uh, made the courses flexible, that you could suit the whole, you could suit uh, many learning styles, different learning styles of individuals. So the courses were built from right from the outset; they were built to be to be flexible. Everything we 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 deliver is applied and practical. So. We, we present students through the course material with a concept, and that's always followed by a real-world example, and then another real-world example. So it's really, really practical. So students, what they're learning during the week, they can apply in their jobs the next again week. So it's really everything you, you learn on a course, you take to your work and apply it there in any industry or economy. The courses also have an international perspective. They've been developed by leading academics in Tulane University in the United States, in London Business School, from INSEAD, and also from Professor Lumsden, obviously, who was at Stanford uh, Graduate School of Business. It's very hard, I would mention here at this point as well, it's very hard to have the first three points without having, on that slide there, without having that four point. Um, really to ensure the degrees that we award, uh, that our university in fact awards uh, maintain their credibility and desirability, we have to ensure that we've got rigorous and so no matter how, where and when you study, we'll always ensure that we assess you to rigorous standards and this is something we believe strongly in. Last point there as well, I would mention that courses are very portable, certainly in terms of the MBA and the MSc programs, in, in their nature, you can apply them to any industry and economy, but, but, but in terms of the practical course material, the practical learning uh, side of things as well, you can actually download the course material to an e-reader. You can see the gentleman in that uh, image there at the top, it's got a, a, an iPad or something like that. You download it to an iPad, so you can download the program, which is uh, amazing. And we have about 12,000 active students now, and an active student is somebody that's sat in the four most recent uh, exam sessions. Um, we have students in over 160 countries worldwide, which is growing all the time, and we have 25 approved learning partners as well. So the approved learning partners, um, just to give you a bit of background on them, they're authorized to provide tuition in our courses. Uh, so some students like to have that face-to-face -face interaction with uh, tutors and peers, and they're dotted around the globe. You can have a look, uh, guys, there's a link on our website as well. And, uh, you know, I, I'm aware there's none in, in New Zealand, uh, Nick, or Ruby in Australia, but um, certainly if you if you were moving with your work, you could have a look. And, and some students avail of those approved learning partners in Africa and other continents. Certainly the numbers in numerical terms are not an end in itself or from a, an academic perspective, but they do give an indication of the enduring popularity of the program. So my, as I mentioned, the MBA program is true to the core values of the school, and it was originally created, uh, and this still holds, it was created for mature, ambitious professionals. Mature because you have to bring your experience to 
the program to your studies. It's not a it's not a, a program that we would recommend that undergraduates who've just completed their first degree go on to study right after that because you need to have to under, uh, the experience to underpin uh, your studies when learning new concepts and tools and techniques. The average age of our students is currently about 34 years of age. Students are, are at that age, at that at really at that time in their career, maybe 10 years on, having trained as a, a pharmacist, a doctor, uh, a lawyer or accountant, and they want to gain a wider skill set in terms of business and management education and dealing with people and problems in their organizations and strategic planning and people and change. And, and these, uh, this, this MBA and the MSc programs, particularly the MBA, will give you the core skills to do your job better in any industry or any economy. Um, it will equip equips people really to to be better to do their jobs better and make their organizations more successful and um, and and really be more successful in their careers. So all learning content and design is embedded within the course text and web. So we do say to students that there's no, it's not necessary, there's no reason why they need to consult a university library and do some background reading. Everything is contained within that course material we provide you with. So that's what you study to pass the examination. Of course, uh, that last point there as well, uh, tutors in school, uh, faculty add value and context if required. And I'll, I'll mention the study routes. So there's a number of different study routes uh, for the program as well. So here you can see uh, this is the MBA structure, typical MBA structure. It's in a modular approach, uh, common with a lot of US business schools, in fact. Every course there in white are the core courses, and the, every course is treated as a separate subject. So to assume a z we, we assume a zero base of knowledge from a student in each of these courses, and we take that student from that zero base right up to master's level understanding in quite a, quite a short space of time. Um, you can see there that strategic planning is the core course in the middle. So that's the core course we advise students to leave until the end. We don't recommend that students um, actually study this course. It really depends. Again, we have no prescribed order, er, prescribed order of study as such. You can start, start with any, any course, but we would advise students to leave uh, strategic planning as the last core course because that pulls together the tools and techniques learned in the other core courses. So it's probably pretty important to, to leave that one. A lot of our students begin with organizational behavior and um, finding out about uh, how to manage teams and dealing with people and problems. So a lot, it, it is quite a popular one for, for people to, to begin with. I would say that we don't have, like I said, you don't have a prescribed order of study, but you certainly can. Um, you can you can start with uh, OB. There is a suggested course order on our student handbook, and that's available to download at the end of this session. So to have maybe have a look at that as well. You can study them. Um, you can study the electives there that you can see in the bottom. You have to complete seven core courses and two electives. So you have to you can you can study those electives alongside the core. That's absolutely no problem. So you can study the electives in any order. We advise that each course requires approximately 200 hours of study. The average, um, the average taken is about one or two courses per six months. That's that's just a general guidance. You know, we wouldn't advise students to take any more than three courses at a given exam session, just to increase their their chances of passing. You can see here there's a list of elective courses, and they're broadly grouped around finance, marketing, strategic planning, and human resource management and they cater for interest students have in career development. There's quite a lot of electives there to choose from, so there is quite a, a lot of uh, diversity. And you can, you can download the course tasters on our website and have a look at those electives and see what you might want to, to, to study. And uh, they can, like I said, they can be studied alongside the, the, the core, and they're, they're 200 hours of study. Uh, that's, that's required uh, study input hours for each, um, for each elective course, so the exact same as the core courses. Now we also offer what are called the MBA with specialisms and these are for people that want the generic and applicable skills of an MBA but they also want to demonstrate that they've got knowledge in a given discipline and instead of completing seven core and two electives you have to complete seven core courses and four specialist electives and these uh, fall into marketing, human resource management, finance and strategic planning so they're the four specialist uh, degrees that we offer. Now you can you don't have to decide at the outset that you want to complete your specialism you can work towards your mba and then if you feel 
halfway through it, or you can you could even graduate, in fact, with your MBA, and you could come back to receive a further certificate of specialization by completing the necessary specialist uh, subjects or courses. So about 10%, I think, in fact, of our students uh, go on to complete a specialism. So it's entirely your choice. You Maybe if you have an idea that you want to complete a specialism at the outset of your studies, that you could have a look and, and ensure the electives that you choose fall into the different streams. And again, under the structure section of on our website, under the specialism programs, you'll see how the, the, the elect, which electives are offered under each specialism. And um, yeah, absolutely, and no, uh, no issue with a, a student deciding to study the electives after they graduate, or even deferring their graduation, uh, the graduation of their general MBA until they've, they've completed the necessary electives to to achieve the specialism. That's absolutely fine. Some time ago, we took a decision that there was no uh, reason why somebody that didn't have English as their first language couldn't be. Uh, seen to, to uh, have mastered a, a subject, a particular subject, uh, and we decided to translate the languages uh, into what we deem as the world's global languages, Chinese, Spanish, Arabic, and Russian. So the core courses are available in these languages, and students can sit in these languages also if they, if they wish. And some of the electives are, uh, in, are translated into each of these core. And there's a language options page on our website, which gives more detail. But there is a bit of flexibility there for, for students that want to maybe study in English in a particular uh, course and then sit, for example, and then sit the, the core course in Arabic, the examination. They can do that. That's absolutely fine. Now, the MSc programs, these uh, are really for people and they're aimed at students who know what their career aspirations are. They know they don't want really the, the, the broad oversight of an MBA degree. They want uh, the uh, specialist knowledge which you obtain from, from one of these MSc programs. And again, they fall into the areas of human resource management, financial management, marketing, and strategic planning. They're a similar construct to the MBA in that nine courses are required, but you have to complete a different combination of core and elective. There's five core uh, required for the MSc and four electives. So that goes for each of the MSc programs. You need to complete those four, uh, nine courses. And they all follow, they adopt the Edinburgh Business School approach in terms of, they all follow the same construct in terms of the assessment type. It's a three hour closed book examination and 200 hours of study required, study input hours for each, each particular course. We also offer interim awards on the MBA and MSc programs, and these are milestone awards en route to achieving uh, your, your degree. There, you can, you can, I often get asked, um, do I have to actually uh, apply for these awards? But what happens is, once you meet the requirements, so for example, with the postgraduate certificate on the MBA, for example, you need to complete one core and two electives, a minimum of one core. And it can be a combination. You can complete three core if you want, or two electives, but it has to be at least one core. And once you reach that stage, uh, you'll be given the opportunity to apply for that award. It's a milestone marker, really, on, on, on route to achieving the MBA. But those three courses count towards the nine for the degree. Likewise, uh, on the MSc program, once you complete three courses, uh, they all have to be core, in fact, in the relevant business discipline, you'll achieve the postgraduate certificate. Uh, and then uh, the diploma, six courses. So you can apply for them. Some students take them, not everybody, but some students like to, to apply and obtain that award as they to progress to, to, the, uh, to, their, to completing their degree. So the admission requirements are pretty straightforward. Admission is normally gained by holding a first or second class honors undergraduate degree, which is recognized by Hurry to Watt University. Alternatively, if you don't have an undergraduate degree, you can matriculate onto the program or formally register as a, a student of Hurry to Watt University by passing three courses, one of which is a core course. Uh, for the MSc, you have to complete three courses, and one of the, they, they all, they're all core, and one is the relevant business discipline. So if it was an MSc in marketing, you'd have to have completion marketing, plus two other core courses. And um, those count towards the, the nine for the degree. Sometimes people ask me, um, do I ha is it some kind of entrance? Uh, do I are they entrance courses, and then I'm accepted onto the program? That's not the case. The, it's a really a formality. Once you get to that postgraduate certificate level, you're matriculated as a formally registered student of the university at that point. But they do count towards the nine for the degree. I would mention as well that we have a number of different study routes uh, uh, for programs. You can study the MBA on campus in Edinburgh on a part-time and full-time basis, in Dubai, in fact, on a full-time and part-time basis, and 
on a part-time basis at our campus in Puchajaya, Malaysia. Uh, students can also study with our approved learning partners. Uh, so we have 25, as I mentioned a few moments ago, we've got 25 partners globally. And you can study by distance learning from anywhere in the world. With distance learning, there's no time limit for completing courses. You can study them, as I mentioned, in any order sequence. That's entirely up to yourself. Like I said, have a look at the student handbook. There is a suggested course order of study there. But we do also offer some uh, optional four-day seminars and two-day revision sessions on campus here in Edinburgh. So if a distance learner decided that they, they could uh, benefit from you know, receiving that face-to-face -face tuition from, uh, from tutors here and, and gain some uh, benefit from engaging in in-class simulations and group work. They can attend the four-day seminars. Now, I would say they're not compulsory for students. They can uh, choose whether or not they want to come here. Some distance learners do fly here if they're coming here for work and they want to come and visit.
Thanks, David. Um, hi, Nick. Hi, hi, Ruby. Um, I have to apologize that uh, my slides are frozen on my side. So Kia is going to drive the slides while I, uh, I talk to them. Um, but I'm hoping you can see a map of uh, Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands up the uh, top right hand corner. I, I'll just talk you a little bit through, uh, I guess, the focus of the regional office um, and, and really my mine and Kia's role, I suppose. Um, but really, it starts with um, the brand, and I think it's uh, very important um, that we make sure that the brand's well recognised. It's positioned at the right level, um, and we want to make sure that um, it's seen alongside, um, you know, the other leading business schools in the region. So certainly in Australia, Melbourne Business School would be one, and um, and you know, and uh, other uh, business schools, and, and Dave mentioned a few names um, of business schools in Europe that uh, we're associated with, in the sense of uh, we have professors writing uh, courses for us, um, and so we certainly don't want to be seen uh, anything other than the top tier of business schools. Now, I do that in a number of ways, but. Um, uh, predominantly, I spend a lot of time meeting with senior executives of major corporations um, to make them aware of that. And obviously, um, you know, if there's a, an opportunity for their employees to look at our courses, but also in the sense of if any of our students uh, or graduates apply um, to those uh, companies, that they they were certainly when their resume and, and qualifications are looked at, there's certainly a recognition of the quality of uh, the business school that they've attended and, and graduated from. Um, and a couple of examples next week, um, meeting with Ernst & Young, um, BDO, um, and a number of other um, uh, institutions um, that we, we certainly are aligned with. Um, we also uh, look at um, a, a growth in the region, and I've mentioned about business partnerships. Also, um, uh, in terms of local industry body recognition, now, um, you know, there's some um, industry bodies which are, are more global in nature, for example, the CPA, the Chartered Accountants, and there's some which are particular to this region. Um, one which springs to mind is MANS, which is the Marketing Association of Australia and New Zealand. Um, and they tend to cover the, the Pacific Islands in, in many ways as well. Um, in terms of local support, uh, obviously from a time zone perspective, um, we're available um, pretty much in business hours, but also a little bit beyond that as well. Uh, we're at a great advantage on this side of the world, whether in Australia, New Zealand or, or elsewhere, in that um, when, when our students in the sense of uh, students getting together on a regular basis. We do that in a, a number of ways. Um, 
Uh, we certainly uh, sponsor and host uh, a number of local events around the region. Uh, we opened this office in uh, January 2014, and um, over the, the first year of operation, we ran two events in Sydney, two in Brisbane, uh, a couple in Melbourne and Perth as well, and also an event in Auckland and Wellington. Um, very keen to host um, events in Fiji and uh, Papua New Guinea as well. That's in the great, future. Uh, Malcolm. Thank you very uh, much so for that. Um, I've just been looking, in, in fact, and, uh, uh, Nick, at some of your questions. Uh, just uh, one of the top ones there you asked about, uh, uh, which Kia answered in terms of networking. Um, it's, it's a question we get asked by a lot of students. Photos, we, sometimes distance uh, learning, on this, the, the slide, whole idea of we, distance we learning can sometimes events, feel uh, isolating. Students think, oh my God, I'm going to be left. You know, am I going to have to study on my own? But as Kia mentioned, there's lots of online forums we we have a a, a growing MBA student Facebook page as well, Nick, which a lot of students use. In fact, they, they uh, the bounce ideas Australia off each other on that Facebook uh, called, uh, group as well. Uh, I would recommend Sydney. if you're not, you can join um, it even as a prospect. You can send through a request, uh, and my colleague will, will actually give you access um, to that. But we also have a, what's called the Water Cooler speaking, Forum, and there's a link to that on our website. Ken Kia Brown can supply you later with a link to that. It's it's an informal chat room. It's run by EBS students for EBS students. It's not it's not an EBS website as such. But it's uh, it's it's run by EBS students, uh, and that's been going for uh, years and years now, about and, well over uh, ten years. Uh, it's run by an individual, Blair Harrison, in, in uh, Toronto, in Canada, and students uh, exchange notes there, uh, and uh, these, they can uh, ask each other with, questions um, about the programs. It's a, it's a good uh, forum, um, uh, and a lot of students the, benefit the from going on there, sharing ideas about their studies and things like that. So I think there is a lot of there is a lot of resources there to allow you to to network with fellow students. As well. And some students were, even uh, use uh, LinkedIn, Nick, like we've got a, 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 an Edinburgh Business School um, LinkedIn account as well. Why, students uh, go on there. I noticed that I was on there during the week and there was a the student um, discussing um, some interesting society. conversations going on about um, uh, which course to, to begin with and things like that and whether to study with a, an ALP or on campus. So yeah, distance learners have a lot of opportunity for the mutual benefit and discussion. Um, and you can see from the, the photos as we go through um, that um, there's. Sorry, Malcolm, uh, you're going to answer this uh, question by um, Nick. Recognizable um, on the left um, of this slide. Um, I think, uh, Malcolm, Nick's uh, next question there is probably one for you as well, just about the types of businesses. Um, it be locally or nationally. Um, we've had some fantastic outcomes from f some of our scholars. A great example, um, a lady called Veronica um, Bainton, um, uh, who won her scholarship in 2010, uh, actually has been doing some wonderful work in Papua New Guinea and in integrating uh, mining companies in the local communities. 
um, of, of both of those uh, communities. And also, um, she was actually accepted. Um, Ruby, I think you've asked the question the about um, the different the main differences between the MBA and the, the MSc. The a question MBA I get asked, in fact, quite a lot. I would say that the MBA is a general management degree. And that's that's you know first and foremost it's general management degree it gives you 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 know really it covers or MBA covers the main subject areas you'd, you would encounter in any typical business environment I think the MSCs they're really like I, I mentioned in the presentation they're for for people that know what their career aspirations are so you might have somebody that's working in the field of human resource management and uh, they're, they're a human resource they want to become a human resource management professional and they really want to specialize in that area well then it may be more uh, relevant for them and appropriate to study an MSc in human Human resource management, so it is more specialised, and you can see in terms of the electives on the on the MSc programs, they're much more specialised and uh, less core, of course, to do, but but more specialist electives, and that's really the, the main difference between the MBA. Whereas the the MBA is more generic, it's a more generic degree covering the main areas of business, and, and will give you the tools and techniques to to be able to apply uh, and solve business uh, apply that learning in business and solve business problems and um, whereas the MSC is much more special